Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to my first UE4 C++ mini-series. This and future mini-series will focus on gameplay mechanics by creating a basic game prototype using the UE4 C++ game framework. In this mini-series I will show you how to create a basic Endless Runner prototype from scratch. It will be far from a complete game, but will give you a starting point to work from. The focus lies more on showing you how to code in Unreal with C++ rather than creating a full endless runner game. And because of that we are not starting from a built-in template like the third person template, but rather starting from scratch. So that you guys can really learn all the details necessary that go into creating this prototype. And all the assets used are going to be provided to you by me on my GitHub account so that we can solely focus on coding and not asset creation. So let's have a look at what you will create in this mini-series. So you will learn to create a basic Endless Runner prototype, like mentioned. We are starting by setting up a character with animations from scratch. Create an Endless Floor Tile system with lane switching. Add features like obstacles and coin collection. Create a main menu, pause and game over menu system. And add a death and life system. Okay, maybe it's time for me to show you a glimpse of the end result that you will be creating by following along this series. Let's get over to Unreal. So this is the finished project and let me just hit play and see how this works, what you will be creating. So once we start, we see the main menu, we can start and quit the game. Let's start the game. It loads the level the main game level, you can collect coins, you can see the coins collecting, we can jump, we can die, we can switch lanes, we can jump and follow down more easily, die, let's die another time, and here you can see game over, we can restart, we have a main menu, can go back to the main menu, start again, we can pause the game, continue, restart, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me show you. So let's have a small glimpse at what this project will consist of and what assets there are, what uh, blueprints we will create. So this game assets folder with the mannequin and everything inside will be provided to you with the buttons and so on. So you don't need to focus on that. Let's look at the coin item, for example. You can see there is no code in here. Uh, in the viewport, you see the coin with a sphere collider. You can see all those components like you're maybe used to from um, blueprints, adding those components, and you're seeing it's inherited. And our parent class, which is usually an actor, is here our coin item that we will create in C++. The same goes with the floor piece. Um, you can see like a box in here, which will be used to uh, spawn new floors and delete the old ones. Um, you can see there's no code in here. Everything will be done in Blueprints. We will create all those components. Did I say Blueprints? I mean C++. Everything is done in C++. These components, we will create them in C++. So the same goes for the character in some ways. And here you can see like a combination of C++ and blueprints because timelines are most effective or better to handle in blueprints. So we're creating a timeline, which you're probably familiar of, and, um, and then calling C++ functions. And the game mode, which will use our main character and our pawns and so on and so forth. This is just an overview you can see here. So these are a bunch of classes that you will create and you might be wondering what goes into creating all of that. What you see here, maybe like what C++ topics are needed to get this done. So let's just have a look at the C++ topics that will be covered in this series and get a glimpse of all the UE4 C++ features that I will teach you to get this Endless Runner prototype coded. So this is going to be almost the last slide, so this is just an overview. So here are the C++ topics that are covered in this series. We will learn how to create actors and components. Like you've seen, the coin item is an actor, and we add like the sphere component to it, the uh, rotation component, and all that stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do all this, like, and also like overriding parent functions, like 
the tick function like begin play and many others. We learn how to spawn actors like the coins or the floors and so on. T subclass is a specific thing that I will go to into uh, later in the videos, but it will help to define blueprint classes that we are creating based on C++ that we can then hook them up that they can be instantiated in C++ from other classes. I will get into that when it's time. So the next big step is, and this is what we start after project creation, is the character animation blueprint with C++ base. Usually when you're creating a template or start from a template, you already get the mannequin with the character animation blueprint already set up. You have code in there. We will all do this from scratch. You will really learn how to create a C++ base class for the animation blueprint, how to set up the plan spaces and so on. So this will be a lot of fun. Then input handling, we have to move the character, we have to make jumping available and so on. Then collision handling, of course, for the uh, obstacles and the coin items and all that stuff. Then you will learn how to do custom event handling with multicast events. So usually this will come in handy when we are using UI and updating the coin count or the life count. Um, usually what people do in UMG is they attach or bind uh, a field in UMG to, to a value and with tick, it ticks every time and updates the value even if there isn't an update. And we're using event handling to just update that field when really a coin was picked up or we died or whatever. And we are also using timers. When you're used to blueprints and using delays, this is what we use in C++ or timers for in C++. And then custom UG user widgets, widgets bindings and event handling so that we can create our own user widgets in C++ and create functions that can be called when buttons are clicked and so on. And we will learn lastly about game framework functions to pause, unpause, quit the game and load levels. So this episode was meant as a short overview of what we are going to accomplish in this series. I mean, this series is meant to be followed along. You will learn not by watching, but just by following along. So coming next video, we are starting everything up, creating the project, importing the assets. I can I show you where you can get those assets, load them in, and then we start create simple level, set it up with the game mode, and then have a basis to start with for the next videos. So I hope you will be part of this journey. So please like and subscribe and hit the bell to stay informed when new episodes will come out. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.